Two days after the devastating flood in Sikkim, satellite images have now confirmed that the deluge was triggered or exacerbated by a glof or a glacial lake outburst flood event. This comes after decades of warnings from government agencies and research studies that such events could cause significant damage to life and property in this area, especially in Sikkim and especially this particular lake. Glof events occur when lakes are formed by melting glaciers and they suddenly burst open. And such glof events have been a threat to Himalayan regions for a very long time. This has been worsened in recent years because of global heating, which causes glaciers to retreat, increasingly melting ice. What happened in Sikkim is a multifaceted disaster brought about by rains and the release of extreme quantities of water from the South Lona Glacier lake coupled with the release of water from the Chengtang Dam. The current death toll stands at about 14 and is definitely expected to go up as of shooting this video. And over a hundred people are still missing, including 22 army personnel. So what exactly happened in Sikkim? What are GLOF events and how can they be mitigated? The Himalayas are often called the third pole of the world because of the quantity of ice they hold in the form of glaciers on the mountain. As the world heats, the ice melts and forms a giant puddle, effectively a lake, in the depression that the weight of the glacier had created. Such a lake is called a glacial lake and it acts as a dam and holds water. As more and more ice melts, these lakes are at a risk of overflowing. But more importantly, they are at a risk of collapsing as the weight of the water increases, thus releasing extremely large quantities of water down valleys in what is described as an outburst flood. These natural dams, just like human-made dams, can also fill up with debris, which is basically soil and rock, because the glacier as ice had been pushing and inching forward and collected all this debris at front. This debris is called moraine and it adds weight and material to glacial lakes and it also holds the water in. That is the structure of a glacial lake and glof events have occurred throughout history and paleo history. Scientists have ample evidence of this having had happened in the past in multiple regions, unleashing mega floods. Glof events can be caused by volcanic eruptions or earthquakes and today by increasing melting of ice. The riskiest region in the world for glof events is the Indian subcontinent around the Himalayas, followed by the Peruvian Andes system. As a whole, these two mountain ranges threaten nearly 10% of the world's population that lives in India, Pakistan, China and Peru. A total of 90 million people are at risk around the world in the over 1000 basins that contain glacial lakes. Glof events occur regularly in India, Pakistan, Bhutan, Nepal and Tibet in Asia and of course in China on the other side of the Himalayas. Several flooding disasters in the Himalayan regions have been because of such cloth events, including the infamous 2013 flooding of Kedarnath in Uttarakhand that killed thousands of pilgrims and local residents. So what transpired in Sikkim? The main source of water in Sikkim's deadly flash flood event was the South Lona Glacier Lake in the Upper Tista Basin. Studies of this lake have shown that due to increased ice melt, the lake was already growing in size rapidly. Rapidly. After midnight and in the wee hours of 4th October, an intense cloudburst event, a lot of rain, occurred over the South Lonak Lake, filling it up with water and causing it to collapse and its structure failed. This released the deluge which washed away buildings, bridges and humans who were asleep in their beds including the 23 army personnel of whom one has been found. The water also destroyed the Tista Stage 3 hydroelectric projects Chungtang Dam. Built in 2017, this Tista Stage 3 project is the largest hydropower project in Sikkim. Houses, buildings and other establishments along the Tista River and the Larkin Valley were also swept away before daybreak in the floods. Communication towers were affected, so large parts of the state were cut off in terms of communication. Not just that, national highways and bridges had collapsed and had been washed away, which left major regions inaccessible, including Gangtok. Seismic signals from these floods 
floods were detected as far away as Kathmandu. Seismic signals in terms of shaking of the ground from the flooding event and not earthquake. Although, in fact, the previous day there had been an earthquake in Nepal measuring 5.7 on the Richter scale and there were concerns that probably it was this earth that triggered the flooding. But satellite data seems to indicate that the extreme cloud burst contributed to the GLOF event which caused the disaster. Satellite images that ISRO has released have also confirmed this. How do we protect against such GLOF events? Nepal is someone to look up to. They have taken active measures to reduce casualties related to these kind of disasters after two major flooding disasters in the 1980s that were caused because of GLOF events. As a result, a growing lake near Mount Everest was in fact actually artificially drained in 1999 to reduce and lower water levels, which was the very first time such a thing had been attempted in the Himalayan region. Nepal has investigated glacial lakes enough to be able to identify and pinpoint risky areas and risk levels for these glacial lake outburst floods. A 2020 study identified nearly 50 potential dangerous glacial lakes which were at risk of flooding Nepal, of which more than half are not inside Nepal's borders at all. Many of them are in China. Another example, even better in fact, is Peru, which is held up as an example for GLOF mitigation. The country has been working on monitoring glacial lakes and implementing early warning systems as far back as 1941 after a very deadly GLOF event that year, which resulted in a large number of casualties. In the Andes, mitigating measures include draining lakes, just the way Nepal did, and constructing spillways for glacial lakes to drain naturally without collapsing or breaching. India in the past has approached GLOF events as a part of earthquake mitigation measures through satellite observations which can warn when a glacial lake needs draining. Ironically, earlier this year, my colleague Mohana had spoken to scientists and they had told her that they were attempting to explore and experiment glacial lake draining in Sikkim. Also earlier this year, the Department of Water Resources and GSI, the Geological Survey of India, warned a parliamentary standing committee of increased risk of cloth events due to rapid retreating of Himalayan glaciers. Specifically, the state of Sikkim has been the subject of cloth assessments studies very frequently in the past owing to its well-known risk as it contains both a large number of glacial lakes in the state and is also located in an active seismic zone that is prone to several earthquakes and landslides. A 2021 study showed that human settlements in Sikkim in the Tista Valley were at a really high risk for GLOFs. A 2020 study a year earlier named the South Lonak Lake specifically as one of the 10 lakes with the highest risk in Sikkim. Sikkim also contains 35 other glacial lakes. Studies modeling GLOF events for South Lonak Lake showed extreme risk of intense floods. Despite these warnings, infrastructure construction has been going on in the Himalayan region that is heavily prone to earthquakes and landslides and cloth events. Today, search and rescue operations are still going on in Sikkim and we don't have an updated number of casualties or the cost of infrastructure destruction so far, but we will soon in the upcoming days. Meanwhile, yet again, glaciologists and disastrologists are raising alarm about building dams in the Himalayan region.